Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about for loops in PHP. Well, for loop is a special type of loop which is used in conjunction with an indexing variable. And basically what's special about for loops is that they allow you to keep track of a specific variable as you go through your loop. So if you've been following along with this course, in the last tutorial I showed you guys how you could use while loops and do while loops. And while loops and do while loops are awesome, um, but a while loop is just a very general type of looping structure. So a while loop can basically handle any situation where you want to loop over a specific block of code um, a number of times. And while loops are really powerful in that sense, but they're also really general. And there's actually another type of loop in PHP, which is called a for loop. And a for loop serves more of a specific purpose. In a for loop, not only can we loop while a, con a certain condition is true, but as we go through our loop, we can keep track of something called an iterating variable. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys how this works. We'll talk about um, the difference between a for loop and a while loop, and we can kind of look at how we can use for loops in PHP. All right, so down here in my program, I basically just have this while loop that I was using in the last tutorial. And essentially what this is doing is it's just looping five times. So I have this variable index, I set it equal to one, and I'm saying while index is less than or equal to five, we're gonna basically print out the value of index and then increment index. So over here, you'll see that when I print this out, we get like one, two, three, four, five. So I'm basically just printing out um, numbers one through five. And actually, this is a very common situation. So I kind of want to point out what's happening here. This variable index is actually keeping track how many times we've gone through the loop. So on the first iteration of this while loop, index has a value of one. On the second iteration of this while loop, index has a value of two. On the third iteration of the loop, index has a value of three. Index is actually keeping track of how many times we've gone through the loop. And index is actually what we would consider a indexing variable or an iterating variable. Basically, this is a variable that's changing every time we go through this loop. So every time I execute the code inside this while loop, you'll see that this index variable is actually changing. So it's incrementing. We could also decrement it if we want. We could add five to it. It's basically just a variable that's changing every time we go through the loop. And these indexing variables can be extremely useful when we're working with loops. And because this is such a common and sought after situation, there's actually a special type of loop called a for loop, which is designed specifically for using an iterating variable like index. So I'm gonna show you guys um, how we can use a for loop and we can essentially use a for loop to do exactly what this while loop is doing. So down here below this while loop, I'm actually gonna create a for loop. So I'm just gonna come down here and say for, and let me bring this over here, for, I wanna make an open and closed parentheses and an open and closed curly bracket. So, so far, the while loop and the for loop look pretty similar, right? The for loop has a similar structure. We have this open and closed parentheses and these open and closed curly brackets, but there's actually some key differences. Um, and the biggest difference is that inside of this while loops parentheses, we're specifying one thing. So we're specifying the looping condition, but inside of this for loops parentheses, we're actually gonna specify three separate things. So the for loops parentheses is gonna be a little bit more complex than the while loops parentheses. So the first thing that we wanna put inside of this for loops parentheses is gonna be a variable initialization. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice up here with this while loop is I actually had to create this indexing variable up here. So outside of the while loop, I had to create a variable, give it a value, and then I was able to use it inside the loop. Well, in a for loop, instead of having to place this outside of the loop, we can actually do it right here in the parentheses. So the first thing that we're gonna do for this for loop is I'm basically going to create a variable. So I can just say dollar sign, and I'm gonna call this variable i. So this is gonna do the same thing as this index variable up here. I'm just gonna call it i, and I'm gonna give it a value, so I'm gonna set it equal to one. And then I'm gonna put a semicolon right there. So the first thing I'm doing inside these parentheses is I'm creating a variable called i, and I'm giving it a value of one, just like I did up here for my while loop. The second thing I wanna put inside of this parentheses is going to be the looping condition. So over here in the while loop, my loop condition is actually right here in these parentheses. So that's the second thing that I wanna put in the for loops parentheses. 
And you'll notice that I'm putting this semicolon here to separate. And now I'm going to specify the looping condition. So I could just say, I want to loop while the variable I is less than or equal to five. So this is the same exact condition as I had up here. It's just now we're using this I variable instead of the index variable. And then once again, just like I did over here, I also want to put a semicolon here. And now I want to do one more thing. I'm going to put one more thing over here in this parentheses. And this is going to be essentially just a line of code that I want to execute after every iteration of the loop. Now you'll notice over here in this while loop, every time I go through the loop, I'm incrementing the index variable. So every single time we go through the loop, we add one to that index variable. And that's essentially what I want to put over here. So this is going to be a line of code that will get executed after every iteration of the loop. And generally what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying this indexing variable in some way. So over here, I'm just going to say I plus plus. And basically this is going to do the same thing as it does over here. This is going to tell PHP that every time I go through the for loop, I want to increment it. I want to add one to it. So that's going to be extremely useful. And now this for loop is actually set up identically to this while loop. And all I have to do is I could actually just do the same line of code. I could say echo and I could just print out I and then a break. So these loops right now for all intents and purposes are exactly the same. They're doing exactly the same thing. So they're equivalent the while loop up here and the for loop. The difference is though, this while loop takes up one, two, three, four lines of code. This for loop really only takes up two lines of code, right? And so this for loop is essentially doing the same thing as this while loop, but it's just way more compact. It's way more streamlined and it's a lot easier for us to do this. So once again, over here, we have this variable. So we're creating our indexing variable, just like we did up there. We're specifying our looping condition, just like we did up here. And then we're specifying a line of code that we want to execute after every iteration of the loop, just like we did over here. So now I could actually get rid of this while loop altogether. And I'm actually just going to run my program and you'll see, we're going to get the same exact output because it's doing the same exact thing. It's just that this for loop is way cleaner, way more streamlined and way more optimized. And really the benefit and the advantage of using the for loop is that we can keep track of this variable. So I have now this indexing or this iterating variable that I can, you know, basically modify and, and do whatever I want with. All right. So using this for loop, I want to actually show you guys how we can loop through the contents of an array. And this is actually a very, very common use case for a for loop. It'll kind of give you guys an idea of how these for loops can be used. So I'm actually going to create an array and I'm just going to call it lucky numbers. And I'm just going to set it equal to array open and close parentheses. And then in here we can just put a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to say like four, eight, 15, 16, 23, 42. So I have a bunch of numbers in here, just six numbers. And I want to show you guys how we can use this for loop in order to print out all the numbers in the lucky numbers array. Now just to kind of refresh your memory, whenever we have an array, if I wanted to access like a specific element, I could just say lucky numbers and then I could put an index in here. So if I wanted to access this first element, I could just put a zero in here and that would give me access to this first element. So I'm going to show you guys how we can use this for loop to print out all the elements in here. The first thing I want to do is instead of starting I off at one, I actually want to start I off at zero. And that's because array indexes start at zero. So the first element in the array is actually at index position zero. The next thing I want to do is modify my looping condition. Right now it says I want to keep looping as long as I is less than or equal to five. But really, if I'm going to loop through all the elements in this array and print them out, I want to keep looping as long as I is less than count lucky numbers. And basically this is going to tell me how many elements are inside this lucky numbers array. So this should actually give us a six because there's six elements inside of here. And then just like before, we're going to increment by one. Now down here, instead of just printing out I, I actually want to print out lucky numbers, square brackets, and now we're going to print out I. So I'm printing out lucky numbers at index position I, and I'm going to go ahead and run this and you guys will see essentially what's happening. So I'm going to refresh the program. 
and you can see we're printing out all of the numbers that were inside of that array. So essentially what's happening is the first time that we go through this array, i is equal to zero. So the first time we're actually printing out lucky numbers zero. The second time we go through the array, i gets incremented, so i is now equal to one, so we're printing out lucky numbers one. And we're gonna keep doing that until we get to the end. And remember, even though there's technically six elements inside of this array, the index position of the last element is actually five. So lucky numbers five is actually this 42. So actually what we can do is we can get rid of this less than or equals and we could actually just say less than because we don't need to go all the way up to six, we only need to stop at five. So now if I was to say like dollar sign I, this is gonna do exactly the same thing as you can see over there. So one more time, I'm just gonna walk you guys through what we have here. We started I off at zero because array indexes start at zero. We said percent I is less than count lucky numbers because we wanted to loop through all of the numbers in the lucky numbers array. And then we said I plus plus. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.